Reza Aslan was a Christian but converted back to the faith of his forefathers, it's Islam. He has now written a book about Jesus. The book has become controversial as it calls into question some of the core tenets of Christianity. Uh, the book is called Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth. And Reza joins me now from Los Angeles. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, this is an interesting book. Now, I want to clarify, you're a Muslim, so why did you write a book about the founder of Christianity? Well, to be clear, I am a scholar of religions with four degrees, including one in the New Testament and fluency in Biblical Greek, who has been studying the origins of Christianity for two decades, who also just happens to be a Muslim. So it's not that I'm just some Muslim writing about Jesus. I am an expert with a PhD in the history of religions. Uh, but but, but I have been obsessed question, with Jesus. Though, it still begs the question, why would you be interested in the founder of Christianity? Because it's my job as an academic. I am a professor of religion, including the New Testament. Uh, that's what I do for a living, actually. So, I mean, it, it would be like asking a Christian why they would write a book about, uh, you know, Islam. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But in, in mm -hmm. honestly, I've been obsessed with Jesus for really 20 years. I've been studying uh, his life and his work and the origins of Christianity uh, both in an academic environment uh, and in a personal level for about two decades. And just to be clear, this is not some attack on Christianity. My mother is a Christian. My wife is a Christian. My brother-in-law is an evangelical pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who thinks that this book is an attack on Christianity has not read it yet. I want, but I want to read you some quotes from, from uh, some people who are criticizing you. One from John Dickerson who has written uh, uh, an op-ed piece on foxnews.com and he says um, it's not a historian's report on Jesus is it an educated Muslim's opinion about Jesus he says its conclusions are long-held Islamic claims namely that Jesus was a zealous prophet uh, type who did who didn't claim to be God um, that well that's actually not what Islam claims about Jesus my my uh, book about uh, Jesus overturns uh, pretty much everything that Islam also thinks about Jesus as well. And to be clear, I just want to emphasize this one more time, I am a historian. I am a PhD in the history of religions. Mm -hmm. This isn't a Muslim opinion. This is an academic work of history, not about the Christ or about Christianity for that matter. It's about a historical man who walked the earth 2,000 years ago in a land that the Romans called Palestine. How, how are your findings different from what Islam actually believes about Jesus? Well, J Islam doesn't believe that Jesus was crucified, first of all. Islam mm -hmm. believes in the virgin birth. Uh, I mean, Jesus was most definitely crucified, and my book does question the historicity of the virgin birth. So again, I mean, I know that we've mentioned this three times now. Uh, I'm not sure what my faith happens to do with my 20 years of academic study of the New Testament. I'm just trying to bring out um, what some others are claiming at this point, and I want you to answer to those claims, which is... Well, it's pretty clear that there are those who actually do not like the book, who are, uh, you know, unhappy with its uh, general arguments. That's perfectly fine. I'm more than willing to talk about the arguments of the book itself, but I do think it's perhaps a little bit strange that rather than debating the arguments of the book, we are debating the right of the scholar to actually write it. Well, let me, let me, give, you some, uh, let me give you some other quotes from uh, Dr. William Lane Craig, um, who is a uh, Christian philosopher and theologian. He's written a lot of books um, and done a lot of debates about science and religion. Mm -hmm. um, he said Reza Aslan uh, um, merely repeats bygone claims about the historical Jesus that have since been abandoned and refuted. What do you say to that? Well, I would disagree. I have 100 pages of, of notes and about a thousand books uh, that I use in my, in my discussions. And, of course, in any scholarly discussion of Jesus, as with any scholarly discussion of any ancient figure, there are going to be widespread differences. But my, th my hundred pages of endnotes cites every scholar who disagrees with me and every scholar who agrees with me. And I would suggest that anyone who wants to actually comment on the argument of the book read not just the book but the endnotes and f to figure out where my scholarly uh, uh, argument about Jesus comes from. 
What and I'm sure are you, you're going to find you, people are, who disagree with me. Right, exactly. What are your? Um, we're not talking about just people who disagree with you. Scholars, many scholars disagree with you as well. Um, but I want to get to the heart of, I get to the heart of what, can, what do you? What are your conclusions about Jesus? Well, my conclusions about Jesus start by placing him in the world in which he lived. So I start with one fundamental truth that everyone agrees on with Jesus, and that was that he was crucified. You have to understand that crucifixion in first century Palestine was a punishment that Rome reserved exclusively for crimes against the state, like sedition or rebellion, uh, treason uh, or insurrection. The thieves who were crucified alongside Jesus were not thieves. The Greek word blestis means bandit. And bandit was the most common term in Jesus' time for an insurrectionist. Mm -hmm. What I say is that if you know nothing else about Jesus except that you were, he was crucified, you know enough to understand what a troublemaker this guy must have been. The movement that he started was such a threat to the political stability of the empire that they actually had him arrested, tortured, and killed for it. So I start with that fundamental fact, and then I take the claims of the Gospels, as every single biblical scholar for 200 years has done, and look at them in light of the history of this world that we know. And what's interesting about Jesus' world is that we know a lot about it, thanks to the Romans, who were very good at documentation. And the picture that arises from this is of a real political revolutionary who took on the religious and political powers of his time on behalf of the poor and the meek, the dispossessed, the mm -hmm. marginalized, who sacrificed himself in his cause for those who couldn't stand up for himself okay, but, but, and my, whose my death question, ultimately launched the greatest religion in the world. Yeah, I want to I want you to ask, uh, actually there's another uh, chat coming and I want to get this on before we um, we end this interview. Uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor Kane um, just says, uh, so your book is written with clear bias and you're trying to say it's academic, that's like having a Democrat write a book about why Reagan wasn't a good Republican. Is It, it, it just doesn't work. Well, what do you say would, to that? It would be like it would be like a Democrat with a Ph.D. in Reagan who has been studying his life and history for two decades writing a book about Reagan. But then why would, Again, why would a Democrat want to promote democracy by writing about a Republican? I mean, I, mean, I, well, I see that the assuming, point is, is that... Ma'am, may I just, may I just yeah, finish my sentence for a moment, please? I think that the fundamental problem here is that you're assuming that I have some sort of faith-based bias in this work that I write. I write about Judaism, I write about Hinduism, I write about Christianity, I write about Islam. My job as a scholar of religions with a PhD in the subject is to write about religions. And one of the religions that I have written about is the religion Reza, that was launched by you're not just writing about Jesus. a religion from a point of view of an, uh, an, an observer. I mean, the thing about it is, is that you're, you you're, you're, that? You're, you're, you're promoting yourself as a scholar, and I've interviewed scholars who have written books on the resurrection, on, you know, the real Jesus, and um, who are looking at the same information that you're saying to say that your information is somehow different from theirs is really not being uh, no, honest I don't here. Think my inter Ma'am, my, my information is not different from theirs at all. I'm, I'm afraid that it sounds like you haven't actually read my book or seen what I've said about the resurrection or about Jesus or about his claims. I think you might be surprised in what I say. And there have been thousands of scholars who have written about this very same topic, many who disagree with me, many who agree with me. That's the thing about scholarship, is that it's a debate over ancient history, and I am one of those people making that debate. I think it's unfair to just simply assume, because of my particular faith background, that there is some agenda on this book. That would be like saying that a Christian who writes about Muhammad is by definition, uh, you know, not able to do so because he has some no, he can do you know, so. bias against it. And he frankly, can do, every, he can every do book so, that's but almost I every believe book that's that you've been on several by, programs have Christians. never disclosed that you were a Muslim. And I think that's an interesting full Ma disclosure. the second page of my book, the second page of my book says I'm a Muslim. Every single interview I have ever done on TV or on print says I'm a Muslim. You may not be familiar with me, but I'm actually quite a prominent Muslim thinker in the United States. I've written a number of books about Islam. It's just simply incorrect to say okay. that media isn't saying that I'm a Muslim. I would actually encourage you to actually try to find media that doesn't mention my biography, which, by the way, again, is on the second page of the book. All right, Reza, I want to thank you very much for coming on. The book is called Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth. I want to thank you for coming on a, a spirited debate. Thank you.
Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My name is Sophia, I'm your host. The aim of Let the Quran Speak is to help you gain deeper insights into Muslims and Islam as it's practiced here and in other parts of the world. Reza Aslan wrote a book called Zalat, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth. Aslan was, fe was featured on Fox News where he was questioned extensively on his credentials as a Muslim, writing about a central figure in Christianity. Since then, his book has skyrocketed to fame on Amazon.com. It's also featured on the New York Times Top 10 list. What is interesting and new about Aslan's work? Does it stand up to historical analysis? And how would biblical scholars, devout Christians, and Muslims view his book? Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Center, is here to help us answer those questions. Dr. Shabir Ali, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Now, you've had a chance to look at the book. Uh, what are your thoughts on the book? We don't want to talk about the interview uh, yeah. too much, but we're interested in the book itself. Yeah, the book is interesting. It, it's um, different from many other books I've read because uh, it, uh, wh while, while being a scholarly uh, piece of writing, uh, at the same time, uh, many parts of it read like, uh, as one reviewer has put it, uh, uh, like a fast-paced novel. The writer, therefore, uh, demonstrates great uh, literary, literary skill in uh, bringing to a popular readership uh, many of the conclusions which uh, are, are known from uh, the scholarly writings uh, on uh, the life and times of Jesus on whom be peace. Mm -hmm. He calls uh, Jesus on whom, be, on whom be peace a zealot. And uh, in our understanding of the word zealot, it's, it's kind of a negative term. Um, but it seems like he's using it in a different sense. Can you explain what sort of sense he's using it? Of course, we, we know the term zealot uh, in, in the sense of an enthusiast, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps even more than an enthusiast. Well, almost, uh, almost crazed in, in mm, sense, yeah. the sense. The way he describes the historical situation in which Jesus uh, found himself um, uh, has, has to do with that, with that term. Before and after Jesus, uh, there have been, as documented by uh, Reza Aslan in this book, uh, many individuals who uh, either referred to themselves as messiahs, uh, or uh, n uh, nonetheless they, they pursued uh, a, a program or, or preached uh, the need for uh, the Jews at the time. Uh, to throw off the yoke of foreign uh, governance, mm -hmm. especially Roman rule at the time of Jesus. And these individuals are actually known and, and referred to as zealots. Uh, now, in the New Testament, it is mentioned that some persons were zealous for the law, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it is also known that there were certain other individuals uh, mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament uh, who were uh, zealous in a different way, zealous to establish the kingdom and rule of God on earth, mm -hmm. and hence to throw, uh, uh, throw off the uh, yoke of Roman rule. Mm -hmm. So Aslan is saying that Jesus was zealous in this way. Um, is this accurate? We often think of Jesus as sort of a peace-loving individual who didn't want a theocratic state. Um, but he's saying something different. The interpretation that uh, Jesus was uh, zealous in this, in this way mm -hmm. uh, is a popular one among uh, biblical scholars, okay. uh, though of course it does not fit the uh, image of Jesus as a, a, a gentle and peace-loving individual. Uh, so how do we reconcile these two images? Well, uh, according to Aslan, and, and many others hold the same view, uh, the Gospels w were, were written much later after Jesus had left the scene, by a few decades later. The ar earliest of the four Gospels is that, that of Mark, that was written around the year 70. Uh, Aslan says sometime after 70, shortly after that. Uh, and uh, this would be uh, about four decades after Jesus had left the scene. Uh, and Matthew and, and Luke w uh, were, were written, according to Aslan again, uh, between the, somewhere between the years 80 to 100. Mm -hmm. and, and John's Gospel, the last of them, b somewhere between 100 to 120. Mm -hmm. uh, so much later still. Now, in the intervening time, uh, what has happened is that uh, the uh, Romans uh, came in and completely destroyed Jerusalem and, and its inhabitants. So the surviving uh, Jews 
uh, found it uh, necessary for, for them to uh, uh, think of their faith uh, as something that they could live with uh, under this tremendous force of, of Roman occupation. And uh, uh, what, what they found convenient for them was uh, at the time to, to not promote their faith as, as something uh, that would rub contrary to the demands of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christians at the time were uh, one movement within Judaism. This was a Jewish uh, following uh, that believed that their Messiah had come in the person of Jesus Christ, um, but still a Jewish following. Mm -hmm. And and so if if they were also under scrutiny of, of the Roman rulers who were looking for anyone who would be zealous in, in that way and who would pose a threat to Roman rule. And the, the best way forward for the writers that represented uh, Jesus, such as Mark, for example, uh, would be to represent Jesus as being non-threatening to the Roman state. Mm -hmm. And and this is how Jesus has uh, so received his image a, evolved then? Yes, his image has evolved in, in the minds of the uh, Christian congregations uh, that produced the documents that we now have about Jesus. So in other words, the Jesus of the past might have been similar to what we know of Muhammad um, today. Muhammad being, you know, a political reformer wanting to establish a sort of state or a, a Muslim polity of some sort. Um, and this is a very complex question, and I don't know if I can give a simple answer okay. to that, uh, because it's another question as to what was the Prophet Muhammad's own agenda, mm -hmm. and and I would argue, as I've explained elsewhere and, and on this show as well that uh, in, in my reading of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I see him uh, as, uh, as the Quran depicts him, as a prophet like previous prophets, and the Quran does not depict Jesus as, uh, as a revolutionary. Okay. Uh, the, uh, nor does the Quran depict uh, uh, other prophets as revolutionaries. There, there are only a few prophets in the Quran who actually uh, ruled states. Uh, the notable, ex notable exceptions would be uh, Moses, uh, David, and Solomon. Mm -hmm. uh, even Abraham is shown in, in the Bible to have uh, gone into battle, but in the Quran he's not shown to have gone into battle. Mm -hmm. uh, so then do you think that, to go back to Reza Aslan's book, do you think that his book is an in inaccurate representation of Jesus? Uh, no, I, I would say that uh, what, what is known among uh, scholars of, uh, in the field of historical studies about Jesus fits mm -hmm. very well with what Reza Aslan okay. has uh, depicted. Uh, the, the, the Gospels uh, are, are the main source of knowledge about Jesus and uh, they contain many threads of evidence. Uh, because the Gospels are written by many different individuals who also collected stories that were available to them and the stories come from different strands of thinking. Uh, surely the stories coalesce uh, around certain themes, uh, various writers have their own uh, sort of expectations and they gather stories that would fit those expectations and represent Jesus in four different ways in the four Gospels. But nevertheless one can see that there, uh, within the Gospels uh, first of all, among the four Gospels, we have four distinct uh, basic images, and then within each Gospel, you have uh, a, a collection of various ideas reflected in individual stories and, and short episodes. So now, to sort out who Jesus was behind all of these stories, so if we take these uh, stories and, and, and the Gospels themselves as, as layers of interpretation of of Jesus, mm -hmm. then to peel back these layers of interpretation and find Jesus behind, um, and this becomes quite a puzzle for scholars. And it is often remarked that when scholars uh, find Jesus and they give us a depiction of who Jesus was, the scholar often really is depicting a projection of his own mind, mm -hmm. uh, because the scholar in in uh, does not have that much facts about Jesus, that many facts, and the scholar has to work with a few facts selected from a, a wider pool, and the selection itself 
uh, of the facts to say, well, this is what we know about Jesus, that selection itself reflects a sort of orientation of the, of the individual scholar. So do you think that's the case with Reza Aslan as well? That this, his depiction of Jesus is a representation of what, you know, of his own predisposition perhaps? Well, I, I wouldn't say that in his case or, okay. or, or in the case of any particular scholar, but uh, every scholar should be aware mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we all have our own biases and expectations and so on, and nobody is completely neutral. And uh, in, in that case, I, I, I find his uh, resistance, though on the one hand, in the Fox News uh, interview, there was the continued uh, probing, you're a Muslim, why you're writing a book about Jesus, as though that is so incomprehensible. Uh, on, on the other extreme, we have him protesting that, that his Muslimness has nothing to do with it. Well, uh, to be sure, his, his book does not reflect a Muslim sort of uh, predisposition. Uh, but the Jesus that he depicts is very different from the Muslim understanding. Yes, and he did say that in the interview, and that comes through in the book as well. Mm -hmm. For example, he uh, uh, treats the virgin birth story of Jesus as a, a complete uh, 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 fabrication, mm -hmm. whereas Muslims would take exception to that. Most Muslims believe that Jesus was uh, conceived in a miraculous fashion. Mm -hmm. So to do the many traditional well Christians, yes. Issue. Crucifixion is another issue which uh, many traditional Muslims will find uh, to be at odds with the Quranic mm -hmm. uh, story about Jesus. Uh, so the, his, his book does not reflect a Muslim predisposition, uh, but at the same time one cannot uh, deny some sort of predisposition. But does the Jesus that he, that he comes up with uh, uh, reflect his own um, uh, expectations? Uh, I would say no, because this is a depiction that uh, many scholars, uh, Muslim, Christian or otherwise, have, have arrived at, and it is based on a, a very important uh, uh, feature of, of the Jesus stories, the idea that he was crucified under Roman rule uh, for the uh, crime of sedition. Okay. We'll leave it at that, Brother Shabir. Thank you for your You're time. You're welcome. We'll take a break when we return the quest for inner peace.